It's Joe and Lisa with Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. So glad you're with us today. I want to thank everyone for all their subscribes and thumbs up and all your wonderful comments. Appreciate every bit of it. So we talked to you in our last video about how we built our casita when we first came to Ecuador. Well, we want to talk to you today about our garden cottage. Um, Lisa's mother came for a visit, what, well, must have been three years ago? Yeah, it's been about three years ago. It was ago. two weeks before the pandemic started. That's when she was supposed to go back. So she was kind of stuck here during the pandemic. Um, two weeks before she was supposed to go back, they shut everything down so she couldn't get a flight out. And so she basically got a free year to just hang out. Yeah, they didn't, you know, make her get a visa or anything during that year, or didn't yeah. charge her any you know, extension fees or anything? Nope, just a free year. So then, you know, she decided, well, I think I'm going to stay. <laughs> yeah. So that uh, presented a, a new issue. And so um, we had an Ecuadorian family living in a 40-foot container on the property. And uh, they had been there with the previous owners. Mm -hmm. And we had never seen the inside of this container. It had a, had a thatched roof. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was all eaten up with termites and bugs and stuff in it yeah and um, so uh, at some point we they decided to live somewhere else and we said we're going to rehab this container and make it a tiny home or a garden cottage for for Georgia yeah, yeah. so um, you know once they moved down they had a wall in one end that was separating like a storage room um, mm -hmm. so we ripped all, all the inside all the inside it was incredible to get everything out and actually see the whole thing at one time. Yeah, the floor was, was an, an absolute mess, you know, oil stains and stuff, and mm -hmm. especially on the side where the um, storage was. And it was, um, it was quite a mess. We had to do some patchwork here and there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we, um, we first we gutted it, and then we did um, the iron work for the, a new roof to cover the entire thing. Mm -hmm. And I had, uh, Maestro Victor Ortiz involved in doing that. And he is incredible. He's like one of the best guys here in Bilcabamba. He, Victor is great. Hats off to Victor. And uh, he's located right behind the uh, bus station. Mm -hmm. So easy to find Victor. So he did the iron work for the new roof and then uh, put the roof on. I can't remember, like 90 square meters of roof or something. but Yeah, it was a lot because it doesn't just cover just the container. It covers the whole slab area, so you have um, you can make use of the outdoor living space a lot better. Yeah, I made a really nice uh, shaded porch for her there, mm -hmm. and um, so yeah, the the floors were were really bad. We had a guy come in, and he had one of these giant sanders. These two little guys, and the uh, indigenous guys, yeah. came in. They sanded that floor down. It took them a couple days. They filled holes in. Uh, you know, patched holes and sanded again. And when they got it all cleaned up, then they put a nice lacquer finish on the floor. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh, it was so gorgeous. Made for a great floor and uh, really, really nice. So when we got that done, my friend Edwin Castillo, he and I uh, pulled a new electrical mm -hmm. from all the way from the box, all the way over there to the container, um, ran electrical lines for plugs, lights, indoor, outdoor, it has its own little breaker box on there now. Yeah. And so all new, and we put it inside little uh, snap channels so, you know, the wires wouldn't get damaged. And um, then we had the guys come in with the gypsum board or sheetrock, as we call it in the U.S. That really made a big difference because, one, it added a little bit of insulation in there, um, helped with the sound so it doesn't sound like you're in a big echoey cavern. Yeah, and it uh, really, really made it nice and comfy. Mm -hmm. um, Victor and his crew then painted the entire outside of it mm -hmm. and uh, really made it look good. The doors on the end that used to swivel open are now welded shut and put a window in that end. Yeah. Um, they put all new windows with bug screens and they went did. ahead and put the, they call them bars of protection on top of the windows. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That's pretty standard operation here in Ecuador. Um, so yeah, then uh, I installed all the new lighting fixtures. Um, we had the tile guys come in, um, Jose Villa and his father Byron. Uh, again, great tile crew. They came in, did the tile work in the bathroom and shower and uh, on the countertops. We did really nice tiles on the countertops and um, they're kind of an imported uh, little square tile. 
and uh, they worked out really well. They did. And so all new fixtures, put a, a tiny kitchen in it with really nice cabinets and drawers, and it has a four burner uh, stove top, mm -hmm. um, a nice uh, stainless steel sink, and of course the refrigerator fits in there. And then Milton's uh, carpenter is so good. He, uh, Augusto, mm. hats off to Augusto. He uh, built an Anwar uh, to, to hold clothes and things like that. And that acts as a separation between the kitchen and the bedroom. Mm -hmm. so. It was really nice. It's um, adding privacy in there that you wouldn't have had otherwise, because otherwise it would have just been straight through. And putting walls and doors in is just not a great idea. Um, he built a sliding barn door for the bathroom. Turned out great. Yeah, that turned out really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, he did a great job on that. and. Um, we had some furniture made, Augusto had some furniture made and mm -hmm. uh, got a couple nice chairs in there. Yeah, she had some pictures of some uh, some little simple chairs and they did a really good job recreating them from pictures. Yeah, and um, yeah, they just did marvelous work and we had some, um, finally had some iron railings put up outside, mm -hmm. banisters if you want to call them that. Yeah. It's all wrought iron work that Victor Ortiz and his guys handled all that work? Yeah, that really changed everything. So you had just a flat slab with a, a cover over it and then adding the railing made it almost like your outdoor living space. Yeah, and then um, uh, Jose Villa came back and he did some uh, brick sidewalk work outside. Mm -hmm. um, you see that in the pictures. And well, and he built the little um, rock wall. So on one end there's a, a stone wall with a door opening and it goes into the, the outdoor living space, which he also did the tile work on that. We put in a uh, caliphone or a uh, tankless water heater, mm -hmm. so she has plenty of hot water there. Yep. And um, that all just worked out perfectly. We did use the RCA caliphone again, um, mm -hmm. and that's, that just really delivers a lot of hot water. It really does. We did uh, gutters and downspouts, uh, you know, all done by Victor Ortiz. That turned out really nice. Mm -hmm. And as you see in the pictures, there's lots of wonderful landscaping outside, and that's all done by Georgia. She maintains it. She babies it every day. Landscaping by Georgia. There you go. And she's done a marvel marvelous job with it. She seems to be extremely happy there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes it gets a little cool over there when we have our days with not much sun. But True. For but the most part, um, she's snug as a bug in a rug. There you go. Yeah, and the, it's interesting. She sits out on her porch now and can watch the birds come in. And she's been able to see a couple of birds that we didn't have in the beginning. So she's made the landscaping to where it's very inviting to the birds. We've taken out some different trees that weren't doing very well that mm -hmm. actually opened up and gave her some views from her porch. For a little while. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other trees grew up and covered it up. <laughs> have to keep trimming trees. <laughs> Everything grows very quickly. So she has her own little strawberry patch and she has some rainwater storage tanks so she can water everything with rainwater. Mm -hmm. um, she uh, has some carrots growing over there right now. Oh yeah, the carrots and, are doing really well. Yeah, and she has, um, oh, just all sorts of stuff, green beans growing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. lots of landscape plants, so. Yeah, lots of landscape. Citrus and bananas over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the bananas are producing well and the citrus are doing real, really well right now. So so the container is a 40 foot long by eight foot wide. Um, it was in place when we came. I forgot to mention that Milton really did a nice job, he and Augusto, of building a did. screen door. Um, oh, wow, what a great door. Yeah, nice screen door they put on it, really handy. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, we put some really good locks on the container so it's secure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so, um, you know, that's all secured over there and it all looks good. That it does. So I think that, you know, not including the container because it was already in place, mm -hmm. I think we spent, a, you know, with furniture and everything, we probably spent about $9,000 mm -hmm. total on Nine that. Nine to 10, yeah. Yeah, somewhere in that area. Yeah. And so um, you could probably maybe build a house for that much, but I don't think so. Because if you compare mm -hmm. it to our casita, it's, it's a little less square footage, definitely. Mm -hmm. But um, 
you know, the casita was 23,000 roughly. Yeah. And this was 9,000. Um, you know, it's smaller than the casita. I think you'd be hard pressed to be able to build a house for 9,000 bucks. Plus, if yeah. you throw in the cost of a container at 2500 to, you know, $3,500. Yeah. Well, and, and that, that was the price when we did it. I mean, I think all the prices, especially metal, has gone up. Definitely. The metal so, roofing has gone up. And, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, was it worth it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I think so. I mean, it's a uh, extremely livable space. You have the 40-foot container. That's, that's easy enough. That's all your inside stuff. But then you also have the huge patio outside where you spend quite a bit of time. So... Yeah. yeah, so it's a comfortable living space, a great mother-in-law cottage, and yeah. um, everybody's happy. Hope you enjoy the pictures. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a thumbs up if you can. Love you. Bye-bye.